But three penalties that night. Well, let's have a look at Barry Davis' report on that first leg. With one sending off, seven bookings and the awarding of four penalties, Antonio Garrido was certainly the dominant figure at Portman Road. The man who lost most was Georgios Firos, a Greek international of Salonika. The man who scored was John Walker of Ipswich, three times from the penalty spot. All the awards for Ipswich were for fouls on Eric Gates, and added to a fourth goal for Walk and one by Mariner, gave Ipswich a handsome first leg lead. Walk's first penalty was hit high to the goalkeeper's right. That was after just 12 minutes. The second, after Gates had been flattened on the other side of the area, he put past the goalkeeper's right again, but lower. And when, 10 minutes from time, Gates went for another spin, Walk ended the night as he'd begun it. For a final first leg score of Ipswich 5, Salonica 1. Mills. Gates, walk, and it's in. Walk again. Score with another chance. And a shooting chance too. But here's Brazil. Hit the post, put in by Walk. What an unbelievable run he's having. We see a strike here from BT just to the left of McMills. And he hits it well! What a screaming goal! You needed those three goals there, didn't you, with the 2 0 defeat in the second leg? Was there a concern about your performances in the second leg away? No, it's always a hard place to go. You know, Czechoslovakia, but we, we knew we had enough goals, you know, we had the three goals and Glad to see Kevin Beatty just getting the third goal. Well, you were certainly a comprehensive win against the Polish side Lots, and then came St Etienne. Now, that really was a challenge. Away from home the first leg, too, wasn't it? Yeah. They were unbeaten there in 30 years, and they had the Platini and Johnny Rep in their side, and we went there and gave them a right good hiding. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, that, isn't it? Right good hiding. You had a couple of goals coming now, anyway, John. Both from uh, Four Mariner. That really must have been one of your best performances throughout the, the whole competition, really. Yeah, it was probably the best performance by an Ipswich Town side for a long time. And the toughest uh, leg, I suppose, the semi-final, really, against FC Cologne. You actually won the first leg 1-0, and this is what happened in the second leg. Taken by Mills. Oh, and the header goes in, and it's there, and Butcher came in. And Ipswich here have scored the goal that may well clinch the tie. And Terry Butcher got forward there, and Cologne were left like statues. No wonder they look so pleased on the bench. Cologne need three now. <laughs> An impressive run, that Bobby, isn't it? No, it was great, that, yes. I mean, uh, you must have scored an enormous amount of goals in that particular com yeah, competition. Yeah, at this point, how many you scored? As I say, that was, I uh, scored 14 goals in the whole tournament, and that equaled uh, the record, <laughs> yeah. you know, held by Altafini. Yeah. I used to feel really proud, you know, because my Uncle George once bragged about scoring three penalties in one match. And I thought, nobody's ever done that before. You know, but, and then I've watched it being done there. It was fantastic. Well, the excitement uh, uh, before the cup final must have been really uh, intense in, uh, in uh, Ipswich, wasn't it? It was, because that was our last chance, you know. We'd been out of the FA Cup in the league, and we knew we had to win this, so everybody was up for it. Well, so to the final against the Dutch team, AZ67 Alkmaar, the first leg of which was played at home. And Bobby, would you take us to the Ipswich side? Yes, well, Paul Cooper is a very solid, dependable goalkeeper. Mick Mill, um, up front, Paul Mariner, good in the air. Alan Brazil picks up all the pieces, and little Larry Gates, put him on his right side, and he'll score. A strong outfit, really, I can't send him on that. And John, what do you remember of this Alkmaar side? Very strong side, you know, full of Dutch internationals, Mick God, Hovercamp, and uh, Jan Peters, who went on to score goals at Wembley against England. And they had the keys keyed up front with Tall, who were a very strong attacking pair. Well, the dates, the 6th of May, 1981, and at Portman Road, the commentator was Jerry Harrison. So, a mild May evening here. Ipswich kick off the last chance they've got to win anything, starting their 64th game of a long, long season against AZ in the white shirts and red shorts, playing their 43rd game 
a side full of confidence and of course a winning streak and there's the first free kick Steve McCall one of only two players on the field who hasn't got a full international cap so Arnold Muren with two big fellas over the far side they think in the air is going to be one of their chances it's uh, down to John Walt from Paul Mariner and here's uh, Brazil he's offside well I'm sure we'll find in the next 90 minutes or so that uh, 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 a very disciplined side with a great deal of technique here's Medhod the sweeper wearing four back to Nigard Medhod looking for Toll out to Kist or an offside there Against John, I suppose your Dutch teammates, uh, Muren and uh, Tyson, would have known this Hogmar side very well indeed. Were they much of a help? They must have been in the build-up. Big help. You know, a lot of them played for some at the international level, so they gave us all their weaknesses and you know, actually it helped us a lot. And what were the weaknesses that uh, you remember them talking about? Mainly in defence, you know, the defence and uh, if you got at them, we knew we would get goals. And the strengths that you were concerned about? Well, the strengths was, you know, the Jan Peters from midfield, uh, who's an attacking midfield player who could get goals. Muren. Gates trying to turn there. He stumbles but gets to it. Oh, trip down. Penalty. Is it? No. He's pointing in that direction of one horrible moment. Me and a few thousand thought uh, it was pointing to the spot, but he meant a goal kick. Well, Gates wriggled away from his man there. I must say, Gatesy's had a, a real testing time with the uh, Saturday Bucks, hasn't he, John? Oh, he's a, yeah, he's a good diver, you know what I mean? He got, he got, he got a lot of penalties <laughs> for us, but this time it, it didn't come up to him. <laughs> he turns people, doesn't he, you see? He does, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, he turns, he turns them well, and it's a dangerous, dangerous situation for a defender. You've only got to touch him, and if he goes down, um, uh, the referee can give a penalty. He's really know. quite small for uh, someone on the yeah, front line, isn't yeah. he? He turns very quickly, you see. Low centre of gravity and he turns around and yeah. he turns into people. Uh, a lot of people who have been criticised for getting too many penalty kicks, you know, have done what Gates did. Francis Lee used to do the same, get lots of penalties, but go into the dangerous areas. You know, that's what the defenders don't want, they don't want to see in there. Gates is not quite able to control it, hooked away by Mills. Gates in there, but with Mariner spoiling it. Walk driving it to Muren on the left. McCall. Gates coming over towards the near post here for the short ball. Turning away from Method. Brazil. Good turn. Mariner, a good effort, but not on target at all. Really powering himself in there. Lovely turn, first of all, by Gates and then by Brazil. Then a diving header. Gates. Nice ball to Brazil. Gates still going forward. Bit of room for Gates. Oh, good save by Traitor. A lot of Gates' goals are from outside the area. And that was a beautifully hit shot with a bit of dampness on the grass. Nice drive, good goalkeeping. In the air, still a great possibility for Ipswich. Tradel coming to it, but it's well won by Method. Muren back in. and must be at least three or four Ipswich players offside. Well, so far, a quarter of an hour gone. AZ haven't had a shot. Holden Camp to Peters. Holden Camp again. Good left foot, but the top left foot, and still they really haven't had a shot. Fish was challenging there, but again, the call was pretty cool. Brazil battling. Van der Meer knocks it out. This is where they need the roars of the crowd behind them to push them forward, give them that extra yard. Gates. Mills, Walker, Manor in the middle. That's a hard one for Muren. And forward goes Walk. Hooked away, Mariner. Walk. It's Ham 
ball, it's a penalty. Well, the referee right on the spot there when he saw that one. A good cross by Mills, clever work by Arnold Muren. Then Ipswich are battling for it. Warp tries to get a shot in. Then it's Mariner who whacks one and it hits Hovenkamp on the hand and it's a penalty. And it's going to be John Warp to take it. John Warp has scored 11 from 11 attempts this season. And that's 12. Decisively taken by John Warp. No chance at all for Traitor, although he was clearly moving before the kick was taken. That's his 13th in this competition. And overall, his 34th of the season. Now here's the action in the second half as Bobby Robson is being interviewed by the commentator, Jerry Harrison. A bit of vintage Ipswich here. Uh, we've got to remember uh, that in spite of enjoying a lot of possession of the ball, that we've got to be good defenders. And, uh, you know, the key situation here is Butcher and Osman to stay tight and disciplined and not get involved in attacking sorties so that we get exposed and concede because a clean sheet here is absolutely vital. Got to get the cover from the fullback and let one fullback go on the side that we're de developing. After that, our football forward-wise is absolutely perfect and it's a joy to watch. We, we easily could have been three up, you know, Definitely a kind of a penalty it's decision. Tyson here. And uh, he's got it. Just what you wanted, Bobby. Tyson coming through on this one, on the run. Powerful bit of play for someone who hasn't trained for over a month. No, Tradle has got a hand to Yeah, it prophetic it. comments there by Bobby Tyson Robson, too, uh, Bobby. No, he's absolutely right. Uh, I mean, the first leg of a, of a competition like this, you don't want to give any goals away if you can help it. One goal would have been enough, as it turns out. Um, Ipswich have good players, and you think if things are right at the back, you will create chances. And they, they do have good forward players, and they are going to get a, a couple of goals. And it's proved already, 2-0 up. Great for the first leg of any competition. And now Gates is having to move a bit, and so is Traitle. That was a real big dipper. Traitle's only 5'8", of course, so there might be a little bit of room between his reaching hand and the top of the bar. Gates did well first of all to control that one and then a vicious shot coming down fast now the ball the ball Brazil turning well inside Van der Meer Mariner well beaten number three what a lovely touch Oh, John, a great start in that first leg, three goals. Yeah, we needed them, you know, and I said that third goal was vital. You know, a great turn by Alan Brazil here, turns his man, and he puts in the box, and Mariner knows he's putting it in, and he goes near post, and that's it. Flick, great finish. Did you feel that you'd done enough with three goals? We thought so, but in the end, we needed three goals. Recovered a little bit of that poison in the last ten minutes, but it might not be enough. Still looking for that goal which will be so valuable to them. Method on the ball. Getting down to the line. McCall gets over to him. And driven badly wide by Case Kiss. That could have made all the difference. Method did some good work there, although when it went to McCall, it deflected off him. It comes here to Kiss. And he drives over the top. And that is their last chance because Ipswich have won his first leg of the UEFA Cup final by three goals to nil. Happy man, Bobby Robson. Uh, you talked about the possible weaknesses in the Alkmaar defence and you exposed those, I suppose, really. Yeah, we did. You know, as I say, we're very happy with the three goals, you know. I'm looking forward to the second leg. A good performance. Well, great. When you uh, consider how many more games the Ipswich had played um, against the Dutch lads, the Dutch lads only played off 40 games, I think it was. And you, you just hope that you play well enough and you don't, you don't actually give any silly goals away. And they've got a lead. And I, I always think that if you get even one goal, as long as the other side doesn't score, it's a lot to take away with you. Yeah. Um, Ipswich scored three, probably meant that they could relax a little bit when they went 
over there, but we'll have to wait and see, you know. It's right. And, of course, you knew you'd, you'd failed in the, le the league and you'd failed in the FA Cup, so that was the stimulus, I suppose, John. Yeah, that was it. We knew we had to win it for our fans and for ourselves, you know. We missed out in the other two, and we gave it our best shot.